Hi everyone, welcome to your new single dumbbell workout series suitable for everyone, particularly if you're over the age of 40 and you want safe and sensible, effective strength training. Today I'm using three different dumbbells, 50 pounds for my heavy, 30 pounds for my medium, and 18 pounds for my light dumbbell. Can I ask you to comment and let me know what weights you're using for your workout? This will help me better prepare workouts for all of you guys in future. Now, let's get started with today's workout. This exercise is a traditional single arm row. You can see the motion of the dumbbell is perfectly vertical. Your elbow remains tucked in by your ribs and it's elevating as far as you can take it. There's a little pause at the top of the exercise, so I'm getting that extra time under tension. I'm pushing my tailbone out marginally to protect my back and keep it nice and straight. And I'm keeping my support knee soft. Your elbow on the support side arm should remain soft as well. So we're basically trying to protect our body as much as we can while we elevate and create that vertical lift. This is a single-sided T-row. Now a T-row is harder to perform than a traditional row, so I've gone with a medium dumbbell instead of a heavy dumbbell. Make sure your elbows remain flared out. And at the top of the exercise, you should have a horizontal line from your elbow all the way to your shoulder. You can see the palm of my hands are facing my legs 
as opposed to a neutral position, which is what you would do with a traditional row. This will go a lot further up your lats and it'll hit your scapula and your rhomboids as well. Make sure your support elbow remains soft and make sure that you're keeping your back straight throughout the whole exercise. This is a reverse fly from a bent over position. I've taken three points support and I have ample weight on the palm of my hand as well as my legs. Keep your feet spread relatively wide so that you've got equal weight distribution and that your actual body weight is at the center, evenly sharing the weight between the three limbs. Swing outwards using a rotation of the shoulders only. The palm of your hands face down when your arms in that horizontal position and your elbows remain soft straight throughout the whole exercise. Your support elbow should remain soft as well.
This is literally a Romania deadlift with a twist. How much is the perfect twist? You can see the opposite head of my dumbbell is reaching towards my toe. So if you can mimic the same thing, you'll get the perfect twist. Make sure your knees remain soft straight and work with that big hinge of hips because that's where the motion is. On your way up, make sure you're flexing everything in your posterior. For the second exercise, we'll do traditional Romania deadlifts with a single dumbbell. So this time we're landing straight in the middle. As you come up, squeeze your glutes and pull your shoulders back. Focus on keeping your back flat throughout the whole exercise. Start this combination with a weighted glutes bridge. Your feet should be at shoulder width, your toes should be pointing in the same direction. And when you come up to the top of the glutes bridge, you should have minimum straight line from your knee to your shoulder. So there should be ample elevation of your hips. Make sure your elbows are not grounded because we don't want to push off the floor with anything other than your glutes and your erectors in your lower back. For the second exercise, we'll hit some pulses at the top of the glutes bridge. This is a fantastic way of keeping the flexion going throughout the whole set. Keep those pulses nice and high and you're remaining in the top quarter of this exercise only.
This is a single dumbbell sumo deadlift. So we're starting with our legs nice and wide and our toes are pointing out 45 degrees. The focus should be on the hinge of your hips. So your torso should be going from vertical to horizontal, dropping the dumbbell at the center of your body. Clench with your glutes and work your way up, squeezing everything in your posterior. You should be feeling this in your gluteus medius, which is the outside of your glutes, as well as the outside of your thighs. Little bit of bend in the knees is okay, but let's try not to emphasize too much. Let's try not to squat with that. This is a rotating row from that bent over three points position. My feet are spread a little bit wider than shoulder width. My knees and my support elbow are all soft. My back is flat and I'm making sure I'm protecting every aspect of my body throughout this exercise. As I extend my arm down and drop it vertical, I'm turning my palm so that it's facing my legs and then rotating in the opposite direction and putting a little pause at the top getting that extra time under tension at the top of the exercise. When you get to the top of the row, make sure that your elbow is tucked in. Don't allow it to hang out.
This exercise is a Russian row. I'm doing it from a bent over position, making sure I'm keeping my back flat and keeping my knees soft in order to protect my lower back. Now, I love the biceps engagement in this exercise. I'm lifting the dumbbell to one side and completely passing the center of my chest and working my way to the other side. For the second exercise, we'll remain in that bent over position and work some piston rows. A piston row is much easier than a Russian row. Lift the dumbbell to the center of your chest and try to keep your elbows tucked in by your ribs the whole time. Focus on big range of motion.
This is a front raise from a tilted position. So rather than emphasizing on your shoulders, it's focused a lot more on your traps and your rhomboids as well. It's more of a back of the shoulders, upper back exercise than anything else. Look for 90 degrees rotation at your shoulders, starting with your active arm in a vertical position, soft straight elbow, and then rotating until your arm's horizontal. You can see I'm maintaining neutral hands throughout the whole exercise, and I'm trying to control my motion so there's no up-down movement on my torso at all. This exercise is a weighted hips thruster. You can do this as a glutes bridge if you don't have a bench at your disposal, but if you do, then mimic exactly what I'm doing. The top of the exercise should be a horizontal line from your knee all the way to your shoulder. At the bottom of the exercise, make sure you're looking forward in front of you, and at the top of the exercise, make sure you're looking at the ceiling. This will keep your neck aligned with your upper body during the exercise. The second exercise is a crucifix. It's unweighted, but your knees are straight this time. You're gonna feel this a little bit further up your back, but you're gonna to continue to get the flexion in your hamstrings and in your glutes as well.
this is a single leg hip thrust. You don't need any weights for this one. Your own body weight is plenty. Elevate all the way up until you've got a straight line from your foot all the way to your shoulder. So let's look for a complete horizontal body line. And make sure when you drop down, you're looking in front of you. And when you work your way up, look at the ceiling. It's very important to keep your neck aligned with your body for this exercise. Drive your hips as high as they'll go. And as long as you finish with your knee at a right angle, then there's not too much knee flexion. So it should be pretty comfortable on your knees as well. This is a combination exercise. I'm working through a traditional single arm row and for the next repetition, I'm going into the T row. So when you're rowing, you've got your elbow tucked in and when I'm doing the T rows, my elbows are flared out and I'm up in my scapula, two thirds of the way up my back. So this is a fantastic exercise because you're working both your middle back and your upper back at the same time. Make sure your position remains static, make sure your support elbow is soft, and make sure that you're not allowing your torso to bob up and down during the exercise.
This exercise is a stiff arms raise. It's not quite a front raise, it's also not a lateral raise either. It's halfway in between. So you're following a 45 degree line and pushing up all the way until you've got a vertical arm or as much range of flexibility as your body allows you. Use your opposite hand to hold still and make sure there's no motion in your torso at all. Your feet are at shoulder width, your back remains straight so there's no slouching, particularly in your thoracic region, and keep looking in front of you while you're elevating those stiff arm raises. This exercise is a weighted donkey kick from a three points position in that hinge, making sure that you've got your weight evenly spread between your support leg and your two arms. Flex your foot and make sure that you're locking your heel in so that you're not dropping the dumbbell during this exercise. It's kind of the opposite to a fire hydrant in that rather than your knees pushing out, it's pushing back. And we're still going for 90 degrees flexion at the hips, in particular at the glutes for this one. And looking for a straight line from your knee all the way to your shoulders when you're at the top of the exercise in that horizontal body line.
This exercise is a reverse hammer fly and I'm doing it from that bent over position. Look for solid three points. So there should be equal weight on your support arm as well as your two feet, making sure that they're wide enough to keep you stable. Before you start swinging, make sure that your elbow is soft straight and that your back is flat as well. You can see there's no twisting of the wrist. So the palm of my hand faces my legs at the bottom of the exercise and it remains the same way until I come all the way to the top. Look for that 90 degree rotation at the shoulders and make sure your elbows remain soft straight throughout the whole exercise. Well done for getting through today's single dumbbell workout. I trust you enjoyed the process and you're pumped and looking forward to the next workout in this series. Now's a great time to cool down with some static stretching. I've left a link at the end of this video for you to cool down and stretch with our physio Daphne. If you haven't already, please remember to comment and let me know what weights you use during your workout. The information you provide will help me understand you and prepare workouts for future. Finally, I want to thank you guys for supporting my work with all the wonderful, inspiring comments and feedback. Thanks again, guys, and see you for another workout really soon.